Hello and welcome to this episode of Frankie's Cultural Observations. Today I'm analyzing metalheads. Metalheads, a curious species that think they're Vikings, even though they don't have the energy to conquer colonies anymore because they're weighed down by their heavy battle jackets, their dangling trouser chains that get stuck in household objects, and their long hair that sticks in places it shouldn't be, like other people's eyes when headbanging in mosh pits. So metalheads have put down the axe and picked up the keyboard to conquer the comment sections on reddit sub forums and educate the illiterate poser core masses. They're just waiting for you to say the wrong thing so they can swoop out from the darkness of the abyss and say, excuse me, it's not actually death metal, it's Scandinavian post-industrial my dad's bigger than your dad but still thinks I'm a satanist trash core. Metalheads are open minded when it comes to how creatively they'll insult you for not liking the exact same bands as them. Therefore, we can see that metalheads are just hipsters who keep getting misgendered as goths. Metalheads are not romantic by nature. The only time they drop D is when they're tuning their dusty Ibanez to send bullets to my valentine. Many metalheads play the guitar, and the ones that don't think they do, just because they think they're 20 IQ points smarter than everyone else in the room because they listen to Tool. For metalheads, music is a competitive sport. Whoever can sweep pick a diminished seventh arpeggio the fastest somehow wins, which is kind of like saying whoever can scoff a Big Mac in the quickest time without swallowing has the most refined taste buds. Fast food is an alien concept to metalheads. They live off an exclusive diet of corn, lamb of God, and fry screams. <coughs> what the hell are you doing? There's a substrata of metalheads who love talking about how much they like melodic metal, like they wrote the melodies themselves. However, they feel vulnerable calling it melodic, because that assumes that they're introspective and deep, which is obviously frowned upon in the metal community, because it's not very true metal to wear your heart on your half sleeve. So metalheads just call it brutal melodic death metal, as a way to retain their full on Metallica. Metalheads love horror films and hate funerals. The only way you'll get them to attend yours is if you tell them it's a death gig and it's free admission if you wear corpse paint. Metalheads are the cats of the music world. They seem like they have no concern for your well-being until you prove that you're trustworthy, at which point you can feed the metalhead treats and snacks like dead crows and human remains. And if you proceed with caution, the metalhead may let you get a little bit closer and even let you stroke your hand through his hair that he hasn't washed since seeing Trivium eight years ago. Once the metalhead trusts you, they begin to shed their tough battle jacket outer shell to reveal their gooey golden retriever core. Invading establishments like Kerrang and Scuzz have manipulated the minds of millions of potential metalheads all over the world. But, <laughs> sorry, many potential metalheads outgrew this cult. They got brought to the horizon and washed up on Lorna Shore. Because it turns out that most people don't like the sound of pigs being mounted by goats. People think metalheads are scary just because they listen to scary music by bands like Dying Fetus and Cannibal Corpse. But really, when they get out of the mosh pit, metalheads are more well adjusted and happier than you. Which isn't a compliment to metalheads, you're just a total disgusting mess. What? No, not you, no. Metalheads are a nocturnal species. They hate the sun. They'll only go outside if it's raining blood. When the temperature gets over 12 degrees, they start to sweat and listen to Slayer until they pass out. Because listening to Slayer is easier than slaying their personal hygiene. Metalheads have a death stare that only comes out when you make fun of Slipknot for being a band full of fully grown men in their mid 40s who still wear Halloween costumes. At this point, there'll be the Unforgiven part two and the kill switch will be engaged and the metalhead will unleash justice for all especially towards people who can't name Megadeth's full back catalogue because they're weak posers who listen to power metal. 